welcome to another episode of Adapting With. Today, we're speaking with Shay Murtaugh from Huffman and Murtaugh. Shay, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, this is Shay Murtaugh. I'm the president of Hoffman Murtaugh Advertising. We specialize in media only. We work with paid, earned, shared, and owned media. Fantastic. So, you know, managing the company in the midst of this pandemic and, you know, how has leading the agency changed in the last few months, but also maybe not changed for you, depending on how you were operating. Give us a little backstory on that. Yeah, it's it's been a lot easier. Um, you know, before the pandemic, we had always worked with this virtual environment. Um, we did have an we do have office spaces down on the north side, but we've always worked virtually. I try to make things as efficient as possible. And so things have been a lot easier since COVID happened. Who would think that you would say that? But it's opened up a lot of doors for us in new business. Um, we gained a lot of time back, uh, eliminating a lot of the driving back and forth to the office, a lot of the back and the forth to visit clients. All that extra time has given us a lot of um, to be able to be more efficient and work on our processes. We gave a lot of time back to our clients. Um, you know, we were very prepared for when this happened. And, you know, but you never could really be fully remote. We always knew that. Um, and so that's why we do have office space and we would go down there just for meetings. We've kind of stopped all of that. Um, but, you know, our, our internal process has gotten very much stronger too. And, you know, uh, I laugh because in the past we used to hide and say, you know, we used to make it look like we weren't at home. And so it's been very um, freeing to kind of show that we are at home now uh, working. And so I think people understand that that we can do the job now too, um, working from home. I don't know if they ever understood that before. Why were you such an early adopter to kind of the work-life balance slash working from home and that being, you know, a good thing, you know, which maybe a lot of us obviously didn't realize until maybe now. Yeah, I wouldn't say that it was based on, um, you know, thinking for the future when I first started. When I started this business 17 years ago, I didn't take out any money. Um, I didn't get a loan. I just completely just started the business right out of my house. And it was just much easier and less risky to work from home. And then as I started growing, I didn't really see the need to have an office space. I was always going out and seeing clients. Um, I also came from a sales background. So, you know, sales background, clients never came to see me. I, I could work anywhere. I could work in my home. I could work in the office. Um, and so I really felt like it came out of that. But as I continued to start hiring people, I just kept telling myself I couldn't figure out a way why I needed a big office. And so all that extra money that would have been used for that, I put it into my talent. I put it into my people. I put it into our resources. I spent a lot of money on the tools and things that we need to actually do a really good job for clients. Um, and I don't waste it on space. That's a great point. You've had a, probably some leg up on the communication side of being made more spread out. Um, so why don't you talk a little bit about that, but also what you even adjusted, you know, dealing with maybe more people being spread out than usual in your, in this case. Uh, the communication between uh, me and my employees have actually gotten stronger. We used to actually physically go down to our office because we felt that we didn't see each other. And so when you all of a sudden put on the camera I feel like I see them every day now. I'm not physically seeing them, but that has added a whole layer of communication for us. And we don't feel like we miss each other. So that's been a good thing. Um, we did hire 10 new employees during COVID. Uh, some of them are in areas like Rochester, uh, Harrisburg, Cleveland. Uh, half of my employees haven't even met yet. And so they feel like they know each other. They're just talking on Zoom, talking on Teams, and that's been great. You know, Teams is a lifesaver. We were using Slack before and we didn't feel like it really gave us, um, it was very hard for project management. It was more of more of an IMing uh, tool. And so Teams has done everything for us and has really helped with communication. We're looking at more project management tools and stuff like that. But overall, our communications is are way better than they ever were before COVID. And, you know, how have you fostered a company culture, you know, being more spread out and remote? And obviously, you were doing it even before uh, that. So I say you're probably more of an expert than a lot of us. So how have you fostered that company culture and keeping the team together, knowing that you're not always in the same space? Yeah, so I had to learn some things the hard way. Um, culture is everything. And I started about a couple of years ago, I looked at what our culture was. 
And I always felt my culture was honesty, safety, vulnerability, and transparency. And when I saw that I wasn't really seeing that from me down to the rest of my team, I made a lot of changes. I made changes within my team. And so that was about a couple of years ago. And since then, I, when I started hiring new people, I really made sure that they fit our culture before they ever started here. And then I started right when COVID happened and we were all kind of like, you know, really not seeing each other. I started these mandatory culture meetings. So every Wednesday at around 1030, we all meet online and I talk about our culture. I talk about what I expect from my team. I talk about the importance of feeling safe in an environment. We keep politics out of our daily life. Um, you know, I feel that it's very important to just focus on work. A lot of my employees have said it's been so great to not have to talk about politics at work because, you know, it's kind of, sometimes it's like their safe zone, right? They can come here and just focus on work and enjoy themselves. We have a really great environment. Uh, I wasn't, I wouldn't say that it happened overnight. It was a lot of work and it really comes from the top down. Um, you know, I started feeling unsafe in my own culture, and I can only imagine if I didn't feel safe in my own culture, how my employees felt. And so I also do make changes now. If you don't fit our culture and I feel that you don't fit our culture, I don't sit, you know, obviously we'll talk about it with our employees, but I do have to move on and find people that actually fit our culture. I'm not really giving a any leeway there. And I think since COVID, that's been more important than ever. No, that makes sense. You want to, you know, what makes your team successful is your culture, right? And how you work together. So mm -hmm. don't want to ruin that. Whenever the pandemic ends, you know, obviously you're very open as a company to stay in remote, but do you foresee any need or desire to go back to the office? And if so, why? And if not, why? So no, um, I, what a time waster, um, an hour there, an hour back. Um, I don't see the need of us meeting back in our office together. I do feel that we will eventually go out and see our clients. Um, we went to one of our new clients that we never met before. We went to an event for them. We had so much fun. I do anticipate being back out there, but really only to see clients. Um, a quick phone call is just going to be on Teams or Zoom. Um, my employees, we're going to get together for fun. So the next time we get together, we'll be only for fun. So I don't see a need for wasting time to get to the office. Uh, we could be sitting here and working. That's how you create work-life balance. You kind of eliminate all the extra time that would be wasted that you could be spending with your family. And so if you're spending an hour to get to the office, you're spending an hour to get home, you know, that's two hours wasted that you could have probably spent with your family. So we've worked really hard on keeping a 40 hour week schedule. That's usually not normal in the advertising industry. And so mm -hmm. we work really hard at that. And um, I don't foresee us going back into not, not the way we used it before. We'll continue to do uh, teams and, and zoom meetings uh, for our own internal meetings. And you mentioned you hired 10 new people since the start of pandemic. What was that like? You know, uh, was it a little different? You know, how did you kind of manage that? You know, old hiring used to be a couple phone calls and then a meeting in person. So everything from the very beginning um, was a, uh, a video call. I don't, even, I don't even know if everybody's aware, maybe you are aware, but, um, you know, what you say is only about 10% of what, what your communication is. There's a lot of your tone and your um, nonverbal movements. And so it's really, I think you can see everything with an employee um, video wise, are they nervous, that kind of stuff. And so I think it's helped with um, uh, hiring because I feel like if they can be natural and, and confident and, and easygoing on a camera with a call with us, not even knowing us, that's how they would be with a client. You know, one other change that we made was I used to hire really in the areas where we had offices and now I'm open to hiring anywhere. I mean, they could sit in Texas for all I care. Um, it's all about talent for us. We don't need to see you all day. I'm a macro manager. I don't need to see my people all day. I don't need to, I don't need to see somebody sitting in an office seat to know they're working. I know if they're working, the clients are happy. They're hired, happy with the quality of our work. And so I think that's been a, a, a real game changer for this industry. Thinking about the last year, and it actually has been almost a year since this all began for us, what has worked best for you? I want to say that when COVID hit, um, I think we all got through that first four weeks of uh, drinking and eating everything available to us. Um, after that, I really started working on myself. Um, I now run uh, about three or four days a week. 
uh, during lunch and I listened to business books. Um, you know, what a way to get exercise in and still accomplish learning. Um, and so I really feel like uh, since COVID, what's worked best for me is to really focus on me because really, you know, any business owner would tell you or know or should know that the only obstacle in my way to my path to success is me. As we know, we've all found more family time. We found all these ways to spend more quality time with people. And I have used that extra time to work on me. And that has really helped and grow our business. Um, you know, we, we grew 30% last year. Um, you know, I've made more client check-ins because it's so easy to, like, I don't have to set up a meeting to drive out and see them. So now it's, hey, let's just have a quick call once a month uh, with all of my clients. Um, happiness has become much more important to me. Um, I felt like I was in that, you know, Monday through Friday, I'd be out running around having four meetings a day, dressed to the nines. Um, you know, I've enjoyed being able to take a step back and, and be happy that I don't have to rush out of the house. Um, you know, and it's also made me make changes with clients too. If a client doesn't fit the culture that I expect for my people, how would they ever fit the culture that I expect you know, as a client. And so we've had to make some hard changes too and, and maybe part ways with some clients. And that has also made me happier. And I found that all through COVID. I think COVID opened the eyes, you know, opened people's eyes on what they really want out of their life. What would be your advice to other leaders in industry, you know, from all that you've learned in the last year? A piece of advice is, I don't think you need all these big office spaces. Maybe you're rethinking it now. Um, clients always want you to come to them. I don't think you have to have this beautiful um, space for them to come to. I think that you're going to see a lot of changes with that. Um, you don't have to sit and look at a person every day in their desk or in their office to make sure they're working. You know, leadership team is everything. And, and you need people that have their own high bar, their own compass to success. And so I really go for people that are self-motivated, people that don't need to be told what to do that they already, they already know what they need to do. They maybe need some guidance, but we really just try to hire the right people. And that has helped uh, tremendously. But I think the main lesson is what every agency has learned now is that you can actually run and do business from home. You can be successful from home. You can't fully be at home. You know, that's not going to work either. And that's why we were never fully virtual. But I think that's the lesson that um, other leaders are now learning now that, that they didn't realize why I was doing that before. Um, what else has changed or have you had to adapt with managing successful client relationships? Yeah, I would say that our most successful clients match our culture. They give us a lot of money to spend on their media. I want them to look at me as almost a bank. Um, I used to tell my employees, you got to dress like you're like you're working in a bank, you know, would you give a million dollars to somebody that, that doesn't dress, you know, that sharp. And the last piece is vulnerability. Our clients have to be vulnerable with us. They have to be able to feel safe to say, I wasn't successful last year. Here's what happened. How can you help me be more successful with my marketing? And so we were very proactive in the very beginning. You're on the radio right now. We don't think people are really in their car right now in the morning. We're going to move that. Um, you're on billboards right now. People aren't driving. Let's talk about that. I think one big thing we found out during COVID is integration. Integrated marketing, integrated media is really the key. Television viewership went way through the roof um, whenever the news started coming out. Uh, social online platforms grew. Um, we've expanded to ESO. Uh, we did that about three or four years ago. Uh, we just got people to start talking about it more and doing it more last year. And that was all because of COVID. So those are the kind of places they're pivoting. And on that note, uh, what do you see for the industry in the future? And that could be five years, 10 years. I was already forecasting a lot of the things that I that I saw were coming and we're already doing them. Um, one of them was uh, earned, shared, owned media. So the PESO model, um, making sure all your media ties back together. So we work very heavily in the paid media space. So what is your earned media play? What is your shared? Um, what is your own? What are your, what are your uh, social media channels saying? What is your message? So we moved into that about three or four years ago. Uh, really went strong last year. Um, video is everything. I think um, one of the things that people are still caught up on is they still think television is a television. They think um, streaming is streaming. It's really video. It doesn't matter where I play it. 
it's I'm consuming video. And so that will continue. I really think when it comes down to it, the advertising industry will be very relevant. It will continue to stay very relevant. It's all about the message and resonating with the right target. That's why we've been successful because people know we're expert in finding the right target for our clients creative. And so you put those two together, your impact is much way, it's way higher than you would have if you didn't have those two things together. Shay, thank you so much for the conversation today and the wonderful insights. For everyone at home, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we got more episodes coming your way soon. Have a good one.